So in this video, we are given that f of x is 2x plus 1 over 3, and g of x is 4 take away x over 5. We need to find, first of all, f minus 1 of 2. So plugging 2 into the inverse function of f. Now, we can do this in two different ways. Okay? So the first way, which might feel the most obvious, is to find the inverse function first, and then substitute in 2. So replace the f of x with y. Swap the x's and y's. And then rearrange this to get y equals. So multiply through by 3 first. Subtract 1 from both sides. And then divide both sides by 2. So we now know that the inverse function of f will be 3x take away 1 over 2. And if I want to find the inverse function of f of 2, that's 3 lots of 2 take away 1 over 2. So that's 6 take away 1, which is 5, over 2, which is 5 halves. OK. Could we have got there in another way? Well, um, in actual fact, this value that you're plugging in here, uh, because of the reflection in the y equals x line, which is happening here, the x value that you think you have here is actually the y value of the original function. So, in actual fact, we could have got to our answer by instead of putting 2x plus 1 over 3 equal to 2. So, multiply it by the 3, subtract 1 from both sides, and then divide both sides by 2. And you get the 5 halves that way instead. So actually, that was a lot less work. And the idea here is, um, because behind the scenes, okay, if you remember back to my explanation, and you've got this y equals x line, which is your mirror line, um, if you've got your original function doing something like this, then your new function, your inverse function, will be doing something thing like this, trying to get it reflecting, okay, so you're trying to put, uh, let's say x is 2, so when x is 2, it's there, you're trying to put x is 2 into your inverse function, so that's the inverse one, and that's f, well in actual fact, that point reflected down in the y equals x line will give you a y coordinate of 2. Okay, so in actual fact, the y coordinate becomes 2, and I can solve it that way. Okay, let's try the next one. And I'll do it both ways again, just so uh, you can see what's going on. It is a bit weird. So first of all, find the inverse function. So y equals 4 take away x over 5 first. Swap the x's and y's. Then rearrange this to get y equals. So multiply up by the 5. Then add the y onto the left-hand side. Subtract 5x from both sides. And so we've got y equals 4, 4 take away 5x. So that is my inverse function. So if I want to find um, the inverse function of g at minus 1, that's 4 take away 5 lots of minus 1. So that's 4 plus 5, which is 9. So what I'm saying is that actually the minus 1 would have been the y-coordinate of the original function. So if I put 4 take away x over 5 equal to minus 1, if I multiply through by 5, 
I get 4 take away x is minus 5. And then if I add 5 to both sides and add x to both sides, I get the x equals 9, which is precisely what I was looking for. OK, so two alternative ways of doing it, which are per both perfectly valid. This isn't a cheat. OK, uh, it's just using the nature of a function and its inverse being reflections in the y equals x line.